thanks for for watching this webinar and joining us today. This is all about franchising, but it's not just franchising, it's franchising the right way. There's so many businesses out there. Um, everyone has questions about franchising their business, how to franchise their business. And in fact, I see so many startup franchisors out there. And, and many times I have questions like, if you could go back in time, what would you do different? And so today is all about franchising, franchising the right way. Today we have a really good friend of mine, a longtime friend of mine, Steve Beagleman. Steve's the founder of SMB Franchise Advisors. Um, if you're in the franchise world, you know Steve, you know his amazing team, and there's a ton of detail about him, but, but just know this, Steve is one of the trusted industry veterans in the franchise world. So chances are, if you speak to a, a, a successful franchisor and you're asking for advice, many times people are gonna tell you, talk to Steve Beagleman, talk to his team, and talk to SMB advisors. So Steve, thanks for, for doing this today with us. Hi, Charles. Thanks so much for having me this afternoon. I appreciate you uh, inviting me to the, uh, to the webinar today. Yeah, so Steve, so what I do here, what our firm does as a franchise firm, what SMB Advisors does as a franchise consulting firm and advisors, um, day in and day out, we're dealing with franchising businesses. And one of my biggest frustrations is um, mis information that's out there in the franchise world. I feel like many times that there's, there's companies or businesses out there that are more interested in selling an entrepreneur the concept of franchising without really putting together a plan to let them know how to franchise the right way, do it the right way. Um, what I appreciate about what you do, Steve, you're a genuine guy and you're very genuine in franchising. So I appreciate you spending time today where we're going to get into... Um, the basics of, of how to do it and how to do it right. Absolutely. You know, Charles, I've been in this industry for over 30 years and having created my own business that I franchised in the early 90s to where I am today, helping hundreds of companies franchise their business. It's all about helping the right companies franchise at the right time. And franchising isn't for everybody. Um, it takes time. It's a lot of hard work, just like opening your business, whatever the business may be. Um, but it's a different business. And, uh, you know, people really need to be committed to franchising if they get into this industry. And that's something that we'll talk about, I guess, in the next hour or so. Yeah. And, and so what's interesting, and we're going to go into, right, the first slide is really going to be all about how it, you know, how franchising comes about. But, and we've worked together very often with, with startup brands and, and, and startup franchisors. And what I find interesting is it is difficult. It is a new industry, but if it's done the right way, you could slowly scale into it without blowing budgets, without making big mistakes. And so I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna bring up some of those examples and brands we've worked together on. So Steve, let's start from the basics, right? At the beginning, what's franchising all about? I'm an entrepreneur, I have a successful business. What do I need to know about franchising? Yeah, you know, again, franchising is a way to grow your business. So you may have, you know, a dry cleaner, you may have three dry cleaners, you may have a pizza shop, you may have five pizza shops. And at some point you get to, you know, in your, in your growth cycle of your business, you say, how do I get my business to the next level? What do I do? You know, maybe I can go to a second location. Maybe I can go to a fifth. Maybe I can go to a sixth. But do I want to scale it to be something bigger? Do I believe my brand could become a regional or even potentially a national brand? And if I believe those things, um, franchising really is a great growth vehicle and strategy for people to expand their business. Um, it becomes, you know, very difficult for a company to try and grow organically themselves with corporate units beyond two, three, four, five locations. Um, there's challenges that they have from a capital standpoint, financially. There's challenges that they have from a human capital standpoint, you know, running these locations as they get farther and farther away from the base. And the ability to oversee these locations. Franchising allows you to grow your brand utilizing other people's capital, utilizing their human capital, and operating the business typically in markets that they have a geographic presence in. So somebody wants to expand the brand outside of Philadelphia, let's say you're based in Philadelphia, you know, we're in the Philadelphia suburbs where we're based, and they want to expand their brand outside the market, they can do so and they can grow maybe into the county over, the county over after that, 
But at some point, if they want to grow to New York or they want to grow to Washington, D.C., or they want to grow to Boston, it's very, very hard to do that organically. And, you know, there's a few companies that have done it very well. Chipotle is a big brand that's, you know, owned all corporate. But most brands that you see out there are franchise. And, you know, whether it's hotel brands, whether it's Marriott, uh, Hampton Inn, or whether it's, you know, uh, food brands that you see, Subway, Dunkin' Donuts, I mean, they've all grown through franchising. McDonald's, um, they've realized that, again, growing organically, corporate-wise, is very, very challenging to do, and it takes a long time. You can grow much faster when you grow through franchising if, obviously, you bring the right franchisees on and you set your company up the right way. And you kind of talked about that a little bit in the, in the last slide, Charles, that you want to make sure that you're doing it right. So it's not about just, you know, franchising your business and, you know, selling a thousand stores tomorrow. It's really about growing at the right pace for you. And you could franchise your business at all different budget levels. And some people may only grow at three or four units in the first year in franchising and others may grow 15 or 20. Right. Uh, but growing with a hundred or a thousand probably is not the right strategy unless you've invested a lot of money up front for a corporate infrastructure to support that amount of franchisees. Yeah, you, you know, it's it's interesting. A couple of things. The um, One, I think it's important because so people out there sometimes think, hey, I'm not sure I want a franchise because I don't want hundreds of units. And I, I think your point's a good one, which business owners need to know is that franchising scalable, right? So it could be that a very successful franchise for you or a particular person may be a regional franchise that's 40 units, right? Um, the, and, and when I say scalable too, you could slowly move into it. Year one, you focus on that organic growth. Year two, start scaling out more and more. So I do think it's, it, it's um, there is scalability, but, but for those, and the, the other thing that pops up often, see, we see a lot where people are told, hey, I could license instead of franchising. And so mm -hmm. I won't get into it in this webinar, but if you are listening to it, the laws are designed so you can't avoid franchise regulation. So chances are licensing is not an alternative to franchising, but hitting Steve's points, you're growing, your business is successful. Um, reasons why to franchise? Well, to help you achieve more unit economic growth, to leverage capital from your future franchisee partners, and to leverage management skill and talent from your franchisee partners. Absolutely. I mean, if you have a brand that is an exciting brand and can really grow to another level, and you want to see it become regional or national, and franchising makes a lot of sense. Now, you have to be willing to give up some control, okay, and some founders aren't, and understand that, you know, when you're franchising your business, you know, you can't do every single thing in every single location for all of your or operations, okay? So when you franchise, a franchisee is going to follow the proven system, you're going to give them the model, you're going to give them the operations manuals, you're going to give them the systems to follow your model. They're going to use your marks and operate that business in their community. And it will help you grow your brand faster than you can organically. There's no doubt about it, but you are going to have to give up some control. And some founders, they're not interested in doing that. And if that's the case, then franchising might not be for them. But if you're willing to give up some element of control, they have to follow the systems. They can't make the Big Mac any differently. They can't change the burger. They can't change the bun. They can't change the way they, that you do things. Okay, they can't decide to sell hot dogs in a restaurant if we don't sell hot dogs, just because they think hot dogs would do well there. So they have to follow your system. That is what franchising is, but they'll help you grow it much faster than you can grow it on your own organically. There's just no doubt about it. Yeah, no, that, that's good advice. And it's especially good advice to, you're mentioning about a founder. It's also, as the founder, that needs to be part of your goal. Meaning, as a founder, can you envision and is part of your goal building out a network of franchisees, uh, growing your locations and building an organization? So Steve, for like, what are the steps? Like, how do you see the, the blueprint and steps to franchise a business and to do it the right way? Yeah. So when you're franchising your business, you know, there's different components of franchising. So the first thing that you need is something called an FDD, a franchise disclosure document. And that's typically prepared by a franchise attorney like yourself, Charles. Um, and we work a lot on a lot of projects with Charles's firm, um, with a lot of our clients. And that franchise disclosure document has everything in it about the offering that you're offering to potential franchisees. 
everything from what your franchise fee is to what your royalty is to what the territory size may be. Am I getting a protected territory? If I'm operating a food business in an enclosed shopping mall, is it just the four walls and you could put a location across the street in a strip center? Um, it really explains everything. And it also explains what your responsibilities are as the franchisee. It explains what the responsibilities are for the franchisor, the kind of support that they're gonna to provide to you. It tells you what the actual startup costs are to open one of the locations. Again, if it's a dry cleaner, a pizza shop, um, you know, a childcare facility, whatever the concept may be, it covers all of those aspects of the offering to a potential franchisee. It gives them an idea on the potential revenue they may be able to achieve from operating stores and what's called an item 19 or a financial performance representation or earnings claims. So it kind of shares all that data with the potential franchisee. So that is a real, real important component of franchising your business. The other thing you need is a marketing plan. And so Steve, one thing, Steve, one thing, and I, it, for everyone on the webinar, by the way, I didn't mention it. If you have any questions, feel free along the way to use the Q&A features and, and throw those questions in. And Steve, I'm sorry for interrupting on that. Yeah, so no. the FDD itself, um, it's the blueprint for the franchise offering. Who you yeah. are, who the franchisor is, what you're offering, what's involved, whether or not we represent, you can make certain earnings, right? That's yeah. the blueprint. And there's some legal infrastructure there. So you're, the next stage is what? And then you get into the marketing, right? So now you have this FDD that's prepared by a franchise attorney. Um, we don't prepare FDDs. We work with franchise law firms and give the information that they need to prepare the, the legal document. Um, and we may get into that in a couple of other slides from now. Um, then you need a marketing plan. So, you know, how are we going to go about awarding these franchises? Who are we going to award these franchises to? Are we selling to single mom and pop operators? Or are we selling to multi-unit operators that are gonna buy a region? You know, Panera Bread sells regions. Um, Five Guys sells regions. Um, you know, whereas other brands, you know, when they're starting out, they'll sell single unit franchises. So I happen to be working out of one of our clients' offices today, um, Canine Resorts. It's a luxury hotel for dogs. Um, it's literally like, almost like a Ritz Carlton hotel for dogs. And, you know, in the beginning, when, when they started franchising the business, they were selling to mom and pops. They were buying one location, they would open it up, they had a love for pets, they wanted to get out of corporate America, et cetera. Well, today what they're finding is they're selling to multi-unit operators who are coming in, who are really, you know, people that came out of the fitness industry, they were with Planet Fitness or Crunch Fitness, uh, and they're buying regions. Uh, they're in the hotel business already, so they may own a Marriott, they may own a Hampton Inn, uh, they may own a, you know, a travel lodge, and now all of a sudden they want to get into another, you know, di diverse their por portfolio a little bit um, and do it for dogs. So, and they're selling multi-units to those people. So, and brands evolve. So you may start out looking for single unit operators, mom and pops, and then evolve to multi-unit operators like we are here at, you know, Canine Resorts. Mm -hmm. But now Steve, again, in this initial process, right? The, some of the things you're, you noted here on this slide, FDD, marketing plan, sales process, operations manual. I'm a business owner, I'm franchising my business. All of these, these items are gonna be advancing at the same time in that development cycle, right? Yeah. So, so I don't need to know my full marketing plan, but at the beginning, you're gonna, you're gonna establish a foundation of what's the focus for the franchise going to be, right? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. So. So again, all of these components that you see here are things that we work on with our clients and they all happen simultaneously. So, you know, we may have members of our team working with your office, Charles, on the FDD, the franchise disclosure document, and then we'll have other members of our team working on the marketing strategy and how we're going to take the business to market, educating our clients on the sales process. You know, selling a franchise or awarding a franchise is very different than, you know, selling a car. You sell somebody a car, they buy it, they go off, they drive, uh, you know, they drive away in the car. You're selling somebody a business, they have to operate the business. They have to run the business. They have to turn the key every day when they walk into their store, if it's a retail store or if it's a service business, they have to you know, turn the key when they go into their, their office there and they have staff working for them and they have to market their business and deal with customers and deal with employees. It's different than buying an actual, you know, what I'll call, uh, you know, something that you're going to walk away with, a, a, you know, hard, tangible item. And then obviously you need an operations manual. You need a system and a process written down in a manual format 
that a franchisee is going to follow. It's kind of like their blueprint for operating the business. So a lot of founders, what we find is they have some great systems and processes, but they're all up here in their head. Um, they have some things written down here and there, but they don't have a 200, 300 page detailed operations manual step by step that they have to follow to operate the business. And that includes things like starting up a business, forming a business entity. Are you an LLC? Are you an S Corp or C Corp? Um, you know, how do you hire employees? How do you fire employees? What happens if you deal with a tough situation with employees? What can you say? What can't you say? Um, you know, uh, setting up the business. What equipment do you need? Um, you know, all of those components, as well as obviously operating the business. If it's a food business, the recipes, the systems, how you prepare the food, um, all of those items are covered. Marketing, how do you market the business? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you get customers? Do they all just come in the front door? Or if it's a service business, how do you go out and market to customers? And, you know, are you allowed to market on, fa on Facebook? Are you allowed to do marketing through social media? You know, so these are all the things that are covered in the detailed operations manual that a franchisor will provide to their franchisees. Right. So, so to recap, I'm going to franchise my business and I want to grow. In this initial franchise development process, which is typically a 90-day process, you know, generally could be longer. A um, couple of things. Development in my FDD, so the franchise disclosure document, that's the legal underpinnings. That's the document that you're required to disclose to offer or sell a franchise. So on the one hand, you have the FDD, which is the legal infrastructure. And on the other end of the spectrum, we have the operations manual, which is critical. I will say, I see, and I, I, I have to say, I, I see the operations manual your team produces. And I know Don's in the room with you, so credit to you and your team. Um, they're real operations manuals. And so, so for anyone listening, right, so your franchise, FDD is really what your franchise offering is about. The operations manual is what your brand is about, the essence of the business, and how to operate. And I know your team puts together a great operations manual. They're equally important. And I think Steve makes some great points too. As you're going through this development cycle, it's critical to understand the marketing blueprint for how to sell franchises down the line. And this is because right, right? So someone comes to you to buy a franchise, they're not buying a car, they're gonna invest their livelihood in their future. Um, and so, so I think, I think that's a great outline. So FDD, marketing, sales process, operations manual, and we're going to talk a little more. Steve and I have talked about this, which is we're talking about the initial development stage to get the franchise launched. There's businesses out there or consultants out there that are not as ethical and as good as SMB. They're going to try to sell franchisors on all of these things that you're not really ready for and they turn out to be generic. But Steve, so SMB, uh, Franchise Consulting Company, what's the role of a franchise consultant? So really, you know, there's no rule in franchising that says you need to hire a franchise consultant to franchise your business. But will we- There's a rule that says lawyers though. There's always yeah, lawyers yeah. Now, I, I, Listen, I would tell somebody, I mean, you don't want to try and write your own FDD. That's an absolute nightmare, right? Um, and we don't write FDDs either. So what I can tell you though, is a franchise consulting firm like ours is gonna help you get there that much faster and be much more successful because we've been there, we've done that, right? So whether it was building brands like I've done, like Rita's Italian Ice and, and Salad Works and other brands or my own, uh, or helping the hundreds of brands that we've helped grow into franchising, we definitely help our clients get there that much faster. And I think they would all say that. So an experienced franchise consultant really is somebody, it's either a person or a team, in our case, it's a team, experienced people with extensive backgrounds in franchising you know i mean our team has probably close to 150 to 200 years in the franchise industry between all of our experiences um, we really help minimize those mistakes that you would make and you know we have companies coming to us all the time franchisors who used a different type of consulting firm or tried to go on it on their own and came to us and said we haven't awarded any franchises we're stuck we spent some money um, can you help us? And then honestly, we have to redo almost everything um, from the FDD with the law firm to definitely the operations manuals because they're never up to the this, this standard of what you really need if you really want to grow your brand to the next level. And 
you know, a good franchise consulting firm is going to help you make those key decisions that you need to make and, and set your business up the right way for franchise growth. And what I mean by that are your franchise fees, your royalties, your territory size, some of the things that I've talked about before, those are so, so um, key for you in how you're going to grow your business. The one thing you can't get back when you award it is a territory. So if you price it incorrectly, okay, it's going to hurt you in the long run. Are you growing your franchise organically through lead generation or are you using franchise sales brokers? And we're, we're really not talking about brokers on this call, uh, but I can tell you that there's different strategies on how you grow your franchise brand. Some of the broker networks won't take a brand that's emerging and just starting out in franchising, especially if you don't have an item 19 or a financial performance representation. So we're going to help position you the right way and with the right people, if you decide to utilize outsource salespeople to market the business in, in, the, in the right manner to grow. I, I think it's critical, especially when you say been there, right? That you guys have been there and done that. And, and what, so what I find so critical is, is that part of our roles, franchise lawyer, law firm, franchise consultants, is to help the clients that put their faith and trust in us to avoid mistakes and missteps, to avoid spending that, you know, $100,000 on wasted development things that turn out to just be pieces of paper, right? And that, that, that's the, and also give them the longevity. I mean, so many great business owners franchise their business, are misguided, waste capital, and then they, they what I call uh, franchise fatigue, they, they think it's not within reach and it turns out it is. And, I, and I've definitely seen you guys take care of your brands and, and thankfully we have many mutual clients and, and, and I know how they feel about you guys, which brings up the next thing for me, Steve. So my biggest issue, one of the biggest issues I have, because I speak to business owners all the time, many individuals who aren't ready for franchising being solicited by these one-stop shops or being told that it's so easy. In fact, there's one franchise developer that I've come into contact with that claims to be a one-stop shop. And part of their headline is, is earn royalties while you sleep. As if just franchising your business is going to just make you money while you sleep. When, when, if you are franchising your business, it's one of the best things ever, but just know you're going to be working hard year one, year two, year three to build that scale. Um, and it is so worth it, but it is not, you know, turn a switch and earn royalties while you sleep. Um, and if by any chance that consultant sees this video, please message me about that because I, I think it's misleading. But so talk to me. So one-stop shops for me, I've seen clients come to me and say, hey, this consultant is offered this really low price. And by the way, they do everything for me. They're my lawyer, my accountant, my consultant. They even promise to sell franchises. And I, before I, I, and I'm going to stop on this. Guys, if you're in the process of selling, uh, starting <coughs> franchising your business, just know there's some people out there. They know you're going to want to sell. What no one's telling you is one of the most difficult things in the industry is selling franchises. And it doesn't happen overnight. You got to put it in the time and effort. You can't just go spend a truckload of money and it happens. It's going to be a process over year one organically, then year two, year three. So if someone is promising you sales and promising you legal and accounting and consulting and an operations manual, you should be on guard. But Steve, what's your thoughts on this? I know I'm, I went a little too much on it, but no, I, I, I it drives me crazy, Steve. Yeah, listen, I, I think that anybody who, uh, who says you could start earning royalties as you sleep. Um, while you sleep. Earn yeah. royalties while you sleep. Yeah. Uh, That's crazy. I, I never heard that one. And that, let me tell yeah, you. I could, I, I could would, go on the web to it, but it'll cause too many yeah, troubles. I, I would tell them to call, you know, some of my 250 plus clients who would probably beg to differ that it's not that easy. Um, it, you know, listen, franchising is hard work. Just well, like look, Steve, we took over and bought a franchise company. I right. learned it's not easy, right? That's right. And I started my own franchise company when I was 21 in college. Um, it is hard work, okay, becoming a franchisor, just like it was when I opened my first business at, you know, 19 years old. And, 
And just like I have a consulting company and you have a law firm. So franchising is you're running a business and now you're franchising your business. It's a whole nother business. Which, and by the way, not being negative, when it works, you build up that momentum. It is by year four and five, economies of scale tip in your favor and that's when you win. A a absolutely. Listen, franchising is a great business model. I mean, it really is. But you need to understand that franchising your business is a marathon and it's not a sprint. It doesn't happen instantaneously. You know, in the beginning, it's a lot of hard work. Okay, a lot of hard work. But, you know, you grow your business to, you know, 40, 50, 100, 200, 300 franchises. Now you've really scaled your business. Now private equity firms are interested in investing in your business. Um, you know, I mean, Canine Resorts, where I am today, we did a private equity transaction a few years ago. Um, and the private equity firm has been a terrific partner for, for the owners of the company. So, you know what's you know, it's interesting too, Steve, and I'm, I'm inter Yeah, so you have that financial reward too. But you know what I also find as our clients grow, there's that personal satisfaction, not just of achieving for themselves, but seeing and being happy with the value they're adding to their franchisees and those relationships. Oh, listen, it, it's, a, it's a great feeling when you get off a plane in Denver, Colorado, and you see signs for your brand in Denver, Colorado, when you started in Long Island, New York, right. or Phoenix, Arizona, or wherever it is. And franchising really allows you to do that. So it really is a great opportunity for you to expand your brand, but you need to realize that there is a lot of work involved to get to that point, right? So getting back to, you know, the-, the One the stop. Problem. So yeah, are the one, there one stop shop consultants that do everything, Steve? Yeah. So, I mean, there probably are some that say they do. Um, right. You know, we would never advocate somebody going there because again, you know, for our feelings are, you know, we want to use- a franchise attorney who specializes in franchising. We won't work with an attorney who doesn't specialize in franchising. So if somebody tells me their brother-in-law wrote their will and he could also write my FDD for me, Steve, we'd like you to work with them. We're not interested. We won't do that. And we, we turn down as many clients as we get. And we turn down brands all the time that are not ready to franchise their business. And a lot of times we'll tell them, one of my most successful brands today has over 250 locations. And when I first met them, I told him he wasn't ready to franchise his business. And he said, what do you mean? He said, I have your fee, I'm ready to pay you. I said, it's not about my fee. It's about you being ready to support franchisees and extricating yourself out of the day-to-day -day operations of your current business and understanding franchising is a different business. And he said, well, what are the things that I need to do to be ready to franchise my business? We went through it all. I gave him a list of things he had to do. A year and a half later, he called me. He said, do you remember who I am? I said, absolutely. He said, I did everything you told me. I said, okay, let's go through the list. We did. I said, now let's franchise your business. And you know, five years later, it's in 250 markets across the country. Great story, right? But getting back to this point that there are these companies out there that will tell you that they'll franchise your business. They'll do everything for you. They'll do the sales. Yeah, they say they're going to do the sales and then they don't sell any franchises. I mean, we've literally had some of these companies, these franchisor companies come to us after the fact and say, a year later, two years later, this company promised me the sun, the moon, the stars, and I have no results. And can you help me? And now we have to go back. And honestly, we have to rewrite their whole operations manual because the ones that they're getting are boilerplate. They're not specific to their brand. Their FTD wasn't written by, you know, real franchise attorneys like you, Charles. And they really didn't have a strategy. You know, the way we grow our business with our client base, our clients are like family to us. And anybody that you talk to that's a client of ours or a former client of ours or a vendor partner of ours like you are, Charles, We'll tell you, you know, the way we run our company and our business uh, is we're family based. And, you know, we want to have a long term relationship with our clients for as long as they want. And sometimes we have clients that call us once a year for a project. Sometimes you don't do something for three or five years for a client, but they know they can always pick up the phone and call us. And we're not going to just, you know, you know, start billing them right away for, for anything just for a phone call. We want to help our clients grow because the, the more they grow, the better it is for us. And we want brands that have the potential to grow and the owners that are committed to, you know, put in the time and the effort that it takes to successfully franchise their business. So yeah. again, you know, when you go back to this, you know, one-stop shop, I'd be leery of it in most cases, because again, we're not a sales company. We're not a franchise law firm. We're a franchise consulting firm. That's what we specialize in. That's what we're great at. And that's what we help our clients do. Do we help our clients get, Deals across the finish line, every day we do, absolutely, from a franchise sales standpoint, but we're not doing the sales for them. 
Do we help get the FDD complete with the franchise attorneys? Absolutely. We're leading that process for our clients. But again, we're not writing the FDD document. We do write the operations manual because that is something that we specialize in and it's not something that, you know, the founders typically can do. So no, hopefully it, that answered that question. No, it does. And, and you know, to, to finish off on this topic, I, I, my experience is that as a franchise law firm, one of our biggest obligations here is to help our clients learn franchising as we go through the process. And, um, and fortunately, we have great relationships with like SMB and in the industry. And, and when you do see one-stop shop, just know what's really being done is someone's just trying to sell you on the concept of franchising. Um, you, and they're just going to front load all these things and they're, what they're really doing is taking advantage of what you don't know, right? And what I love about a number of brands we've worked with, because we're talking about how hard franchising is, you know, we've worked on brands, and this will sound crazy, but where they spend very little on marketing budgets and they organically grew very quick right away. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And then we've seen brands that strategically say we're going to take some time. But it, that process, you're... If you are franchising your business, you need to know your brand needs to season. Your franchise needs to season over the first 12 months and then 24 months. Uh, and there's steps involved. But yeah, no, I, there's been so many great brands, Steve, where um, we've seen great organic growth in, in a good way. And what I love, and they're mutual clients, then you see the management team who, and I know you feel the same way, they start they feel like family to you and friends and you go to ball games. But what's even more impressive is when you watch them become the experts in franchising and you watch them grow their organizations, there's just no better feeling. Yeah, they have, they really evolved, Charles. And, you know, like you said, we have, we have some brands, we have one in Long Island that we work on together. Yeah. And, you know, watching, watching those guys grow to, you know, over 40 locations open now and operating and starting with one, you know, one little store in Eastern Long Island. Yeah. You now over 40 locations and in multiple states and, and really growing their brand and evolving and building their management team. And now they're really a franchise company and yeah. not operating just, you know, uh, one individual, you know, restaurant. Anyway, I'm going to get off this topic that I'm fixated on because, and the reason why I'm fixated on is because we've had to take on a client and, and they thought everything was good. And it turns out three years later, there were legal issues. And because they worked through the franchise consultant, not the lawyer, they don't have a lawyer to turn to. And there's, it's a whole bunch of issues for them. But that's one big mistake when you buy a, when make, when you franchise your business. Steve, in your experience, let's talk about what are some of the big mistakes um, that you see brands make when they franchise? Well, you could certainly franchise too early. So, you know, if your business, you know, if you just open your business and, you know, you haven't proven the concept and it's a new industry, franchising, you know, probably isn't the right time uh, to franchise your business. Uh, at the same time, you could franchise too late. So did you miss the, you know, the window that you had to grow your business? Right. Um, and that does happen sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you've got a great concept but, you know, the industry has kind of passed you by a little bit and franchising is just, you know, it's a little too late in the, in the game. Um, and sometimes franchising too late in life. Uh, again, franchising is hard work. It's a lot of hard work. And, you know, again, I talk about when I franchised my business at 21 years old, you know, I had all the energy in the world. You know, when you get to be, you know, in your 60s or 70s, I don't know if you want to be starting a whole new business and franchising your business, right? It's a, it's a big commitment. Now, if you have other family members, if you have other key people that can help you, it's just, it's a big, you know, commitment of time and it's hard work. And again, I said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So it does take time to really grow the business. Um, not dedicating enough time to the business. You know, franchising is a whole nother business and you need to fully engage yourself in the franchise industry. And I mean, going to industry events, going to conferences, we host three events for our clients every year where we invite all our clients to come and network with each other. We're big on that. So when I can have, you know, the founder of gym guys talking to the founder of, you know, junk luggers and talking to, you know, soul ball talking to, you know, uh, Mr. Max or factory donuts. I mean, our clients network and learn from each other. And, and there's a little bit of friendly competition amongst them too, I think, which is great, but they learn, Oh, did you do this? 
man, I kind of thought about doing that, but it didn't work. Did, did it work for you? And so we're real big on bringing all our clients together and let them learn from each other. Uh, we just had an event uh, just last month and our, our annual holiday event, and we had round tables before our party. And, you know, we had three different topics, you know, franchise sales and development, lead generation, operations, you know, marketing. And our clients loved it because they learned from each other as well as learning from us. So, you know, again, you have to commit the time. So if you don't have the time to commit to franchising, you shouldn't franchise your business. And, you know, I tell people all, all the time, there's nothing wrong with having a great little regional brand and having three or four locations that you own in a market. That's pretty cool. But if you want to see your brand become bigger, then franchising is a great growth strategy. But you have to be willing to commit not only the financial component, but the time component. Uh, because it does involve time from your standpoint. Not, not as much as you may think early on, but as you bring franchisees into your system, it becomes more and more. And, you know, I use the analogy for, you know, my, my dog hotel guys, um, you know, Stephen and Jason Parker, that you know, when I first met them, they were checking dogs into their hotel. That's great. It's great that you do that. It's so cool. And I have two dogs, so I love dogs. But if that's what they wanted to do for the next 10 years of their life, then franchising wasn't right for them. If they wanted to extricate themselves over the next year or two out of checking dogs into their hotel and really evolve and learn franchising and become a franchisor and support franchisees and oversee, you know, real estate being approved and construction and new store training and, and product development, that's franchising. And if you don't want to do that, that's okay. It's not for everybody. But if you do, then franchising is a, is a great model. So not dedicating the time, too late, too early, not having enough capital to franchise your business. It does cost money. I mean, we tell people it's about $100,000 to franchise your business. Could you do it for less? Could you do it for more? Sure. You want to grow much faster? Sure. You can have a half a million dollars and hire a whole infrastructure to start and spend, you know, a half a million dollars on lead generation every year. But, you know, most people don't do that. Most people grow slow and steady in the beginning award franchises locally where they can support them um, and then grow from there and use that capital that's coming into the franchise company to reinvest it, reinvest mm -hmm. it in marketing yep. and eventually in infrastructure. Um, and making sure your business is franchisable. Not every concept is duplicatable or replicatable. And if it's not, if, you know, if you're the only person who can make the pizza in your restaurant every single day and nobody else can make the pizza as good as you, I get it but then how could you franchise your business, right? So, right. you know, and we ask those questions up front when we're talking to people. Um, and if they're not willing to give up any control at all and their restaurant is an example, then maybe franchising isn't right for them. Yeah, and the capital is interesting because, you know, and I, ironically, I've seen the flip side where I've seen a very successful company who didn't start with us I mean, they make millions of dollars a year. They entered a market that was very competitive and they had plenty of capital and just spent it, but they, it didn't move the needle because also, like, like I said earlier, like you really need to season and grow organically initially and get your footings. Otherwise, you know, you could spend all the money in the world. It's not going to move the needle. It's about being strategic and smart. So I think that that's, those are important things. Too early for sure. Too late is very interesting because I think you're correct. I mean, certain industries, you really need to jump on them. Uh, not dedicating time, I think you're correct. That goes back to you as the founder, right? Is that part of your goal? Can you see yourself building an organization? Because I, I will say this, you have two businesses, one's mediocre and one's exceptional. But if the business that is mediocre has an exceptional founder, that's the one that's going to win at franchising. Right. It's going to be that founder that, 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 that moves the needle. So um, that's good stuff. Steve, let's talk about best practices, right? So I, I'm going to go through the process. I'm going to work with let's, a really good franchise lawyer, franchise development team. What are the most important steps? to, to What's the differentiator to create that successful franchise? Well, it's, it's all the steps we've talked about uh, on the webinar here today. Um, you know, listen to your advisors, as I said. Um, franchising is a whole new business. It is not the business that you are currently operating. It's not the fitness business. 
It's not the restaurant. It's not the child care facility. It's a whole new business, okay? And you want the right professionals around you, franchise attorneys, franchise consultants, franchise accountants, people who understand the franchise landscape that can help guide you, okay? And understand you're in that whole new business. You need to fully embrace and engage yourself. When people ask me, Steve, what's the difference between your really successful franchise or clients and the ones that just have mediocre success, I could tell you hands down, it's the ones that embrace franchising. It's the ones that fully engage themselves. Going to the franchise events. You may not exhibit at every franchise trade show, but when the largest trade show in franchising is at the Jacob Javits Center every May and June, um, you know, every year, and there's three to 400 companies exhibiting in seminars, you want to go there and you want to learn. Even if you're not exhibiting to award or sell franchises, you want to see who's out there. What are they doing? What can you learn? You know, direct competitors and indirect competitors, right? You want to go to the IFA conventions. You want to go to the annual conferences. You want to go to the regional, you know, franchise business networking events that are held in your region. So the clients that we have that really grow their businesses are the ones that understand they're in a whole new business and they fully engage. Now, there's always an exception. You can't make every single event, certainly understand that, but you have to be willing to commit yourself. And, and that's really, really important Steve, if you want to be successful. Steve, you know, as you're saying it, and I'm interrupting, but that's such an important point, right? And so it sounds like an intangible, it sounds almost like it could be generic, but, but I do want to pause here. And for anyone who's listening, that is what makes a successful franchise, which is when Steve's speaking here about getting involved and what he's really speaking about ultimately is empowering yourself and learning franchising, going to the conferences. There's so many things you're going to absorb even subconsciously, the interactions and meetings with people. And, and what Steve's connecting here is that big differentiator is going to be you as a founder, get involved in the communities, get involved with like the SMB teams, our teams, get to know franchising. And the reason why I think it's so critical is because you need that perspective to know who you should rely on and who you shouldn't and who you should trust with your money and what investments to make. But I think that is critical, Steve. I could like just the example Steve's giving about going to a franchise trade show walking around, observing, getting involved in the industry, and Steve's involved in the industry. I think that's a tremendous point. I wish it were um, more flashy, like, a, you know, and like this big silver bullet, but it's not. But it's so critical to do that stuff. Yeah, if it was easy, everybody would do it, Charles, right? So franchising your business is not easy, but it's very rewarding. And, you know, we had, you know, a couple of clients last year that did private equity transactions with private equity firms. So that's the end game, right? You build a business, you grow it to 100 units, 200 units, 300 units, you do a private equity transaction, you sell part of your company, you sell controlling interest, you sell your whole company. I mean, that's, you know, an end game for a lot of people in franchising. And, you know, the multiples in, in franchising are significantly higher when you build a franchise brand than just owning a couple corporate locations. So that's what's pretty exciting for people, but there's a lot of hard work between that, you know, the beginning and the end game there, right? But the ones that are successful are the ones that really get involved. And as you mentioned, I mean, I'm very involved with the IFA, the International Franchise Association. You know, I'll speak at their conferences and do roundtables with them. Um, and I'm a big believer in, in getting involved and getting engaged. And, and I'll tell you, we have some clients that, you know, literally at five units would walk up to founders at some of the IFA conventions that have you know, 10,000 locations and introduce themselves and just say, I want to learn from you. Um, you know, this is my concept. This is who I am. And, and they're not afraid to do that. And those are the ones that really grow their businesses um, and understand that franchising is the business that they are in, no longer in, whether it's personal fitness or it's childcare or it's, you know, home services, um, repairing exercise equipment, you know, whatever the concept may be. Your point is the ones that gain traction versus the ones that don't, it's going to come down to the founder, what you're saying, the founder understanding that this is a new business model, right? Getting involved in the community, which by the way, the franchise industry as a whole has a tremendously good community. Everyone's willing to help each other out. Um, that to you is the biggest differentiator between the ones that win and don't? 
a absolutely. Uh, the ones that win are the ones that fully engage. And the ones that don't, they still grow. They'll grow to 5, 10, 15 units, but they never really become a big brand. And listen, you don't have to become a national brand. You know, when I was part of the Rita's system, you know, I helped grow Rita's Italian Ice to 350 operating stores. We were in nine states. We weren't all around the United States. Right. We turned down deals from Texas and California all the time because we weren't ready at that time to support franchisees that far. Now, the brand today has over 700 locations and is nationwide. But when I was part of the company, we grew to 350 operating stores, 100 more in development in nine states. That's pretty impressive growth. Good controlled growth, stayed close to home, were able to support our franchisees and make sure that they made money. So, but we fully engaged in franchising. You know, we had one corporate store and the rest were franchised. We were in the franchising business. And that's not to say that you can't be a brand that has corporate units and franchises, but you know, when you're in the franchising business, your franchisees wanna know that they're your top priority, um, not necessarily your corporate stores. So franchising is that whole other business and you gotta be available to them. And the founders need to understand that this is gonna be a big time commitment. I mean, you started the, the webinar, Charles, with, with one of the comments that, you know, earn royalties in your sleep. I mean, you know, it doesn't really happen, certainly not in the beginning. Okay. No, and, and like we, we had a call today and, and again, it's I, whatever, I'm always enamored with the analogy of, you know, someone digging for gold and, you know, they're you know, a couple of inches away and then they stop, right? And so during a call this morning um, with one of our clients, I'm like, hey guys, it's 2020, you know, I'm curious, even though what's your plans for franchise sales this year, what you're committing, what's the outlets and, and what's going to be, uh, what, what, what avenues are you going to look at in terms of attraction systems and whatnot. But um, I also said to them, which is, I think it's true at certain points that you need to be prepared to face a period of time where you're going to be like, you know what, I'm not getting the interest I thought I was. I'm not getting the lead generation I thought I was going to get. Um, it's definitely harder to sell franchises than I thought. I said, so right now let's talk about the things that when you hit that wall six months from now, three months after that, all the good things you're putting in now are going to kick in and we're going to start to see prospects come online and franchise sales. And so a big factor is, is that when you hit that wall, you need to be prepared to stay committed to franchising. And, and if you're working with the right advisors like SMB, our team, you're going to know what to expect and you're going to, you're going to find your way through that as opposed to what I see the people that sign on because they thought they just franchise and earn royalties is they give up too early. Yeah. And, and look, you know, we've had some great success stories and there are some brands that sell and award franchises right off their yeah. first couple yeah. locations because yeah. they have the sex appeal, they have the sizzle and customers walk in and said, Oh my gosh, you're franchising. I want to be a franchisee in your system. Yep. I've loved your product. I've loved your service for so long. I hate my corporate America job or, you know, I I'm looking to do this. So that happens all the time as well. And we've got some great successful brands that really got some great traction spending very little on lead generation yep. for franchising because their companies had that sex appeal in their sizzle. Then I have another brand of ours that literally awarded his first franchise on a vacation in Cabo. So went to Cabo on vacation. Somebody saw you know, his shirt that he was wearing, asked him a question, what do you do exactly? He told them what he did. He said, you know, that business would be great for my son. Ran upstairs, got his iPad, came down, did a PowerPoint presentation for the guy and his wife, FaceTimed the guy's son the next day, and the guy became his first franchisee. So, so Steve, are you guaranteeing know. right here, if someone becomes your client, that all they have to do to sell franchises is go on vacation? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's what you just guaranteed, right? <laughs> so anyone who's listening, Steve's guaranteeing this. Yeah, it, it's crazy, but but it's a true story. And that's a great anybody story. Anybody can talk to one of my, that, that client, and he'll tell the story that he, he didn't want to go on the vacation. He called me up. He said, Steve, I just franchised my business. I haven't sold any franchises yet. I just spent all this money paying. So you're... Yeah. You know, paying the, the attorney. Your website could say sell franchises while you're on vacation, right? It, it's on it's, your website. We could put sell franchise. No. Absolutely, go to Cabo and you'll sell franchises. Right, it happens all the time. So, but but those kinds of stories, you know, customers walking in. I mean, you know, where I am right now at at, at K9, great story. We're in the process of franchising their business nine years ago, and in comes one of their loyal customers, 
and said to uh, the woman when she checked his, his dog into the hotel, um, uh, I want to see the founder, Steve Parker, who he knew for a long time. He came out, he said, what's up? He said, by the way, um, I decided that I hate my corporate America job. I want to quit and I want to open one of these dog hotels. Um, can I pay you as my consultant to help me do it? And he said, ironically, no, I'm in the process of franchising our business, but you could become our first franchisee and our documents will be done in about a month. He called me up and said, this is what happened. A month later, we were franchised and, and that guy became our first franchisee and, and is doing great and loves life and is making more money than he ever did at his corporate America job. So you get those stories every day too. So franchising is a lot of fun, but it is a lot of hard work, Charles. Um, it, it's a love of mine. It has been for the last 30 years. Obviously, it's a love of yours. We've worked together for, gosh, I guess probably about 20 years now. Yeah. So it's, been, it's been a lot of fun, uh, but it is a lot of hard work, and you just need to know that when you commit yourself to franchising your business. Steve, I, I, that, I, I think that's awesome stuff. I know you have a meeting right after this, and I, I appreciate it. And as always, I really, what I appreciate the most is the candor and the fact that you guys stand behind everything. And, and for uh, anyone listening to webinar and certainly uh, Steve Beagleman, SMB Franchise Advisors. Uh, and, and again, they're trusted advisors to startup franchisors, existing franchisors. Um, and we'll have their information up here. And of course, uh, Steve's a great friend. If anyone has, you know, we'd always be glad to share information. And Steve, thank you so much. And, um, and thank you to Dawn, who I know is there. <laughs> but, uh, Yes. She is. Dawn, Dawn's an amazing asset to our team. We have an amazing team at SMB. Uh, I'm very lucky and blessed um, to have all of our team members be a part of what we do every day. And, and uh, you know, they really support our clients. And, and I think our clients would rave about the service that we get from, you know, from, from all of our team members. You know so what? Thanks, Steve, thanks, Charles. So I really Steve, appreciate it. No, the, the good thing is they're dedicated. It's good stuff. And thanks again. And we're going to be doing other stuff together. So I really appreciate it. Hey, our pleasure. And thanks for having me today, Charles. Have a great day, everybody. Take care, Steve. Bye-bye now.